Well, uh, <laughs> I went to Marshall last night. I've been Marshall all day trying to get some work done, trying to get my paper finished and all this. And I was with the Salad Days eating supper, but I was going to Miss Choir Practice to get back to the library so that I could uh, continue to work, or work on my paper. <clears throat> I got back to Marshall's campus about um, between 6.45 and 7 o'clock, and I parked behind what is South Hall and what they call College Avenue. It's a little street right there behind South Hall. And I started to pull in the parking place, and um, I remember thinking when I pulled in, well, I wonder if I'm in somebody's place, you know, because I'm always worried about that because people have places there. But, I, you know, I, it looked like a legal street to park on, so I parked there. And uh, I got, as soon as I parked, I started to get out of the car, and when I opened the door, I noticed that somebody was leaning back here in the back left door, you know, just leaning there. And I kind of jumped and said, oh, you kind of scared me, and started laughing a little bit with him, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and he said something about moving. Well, I'd already thought about my car is in the wrong place, so I got out of the car to talk to him about it, ask him if he, you know, I thought maybe I was in his parking space or something. And come to find out what he had said was don't move. And, of course, <laughs> I had just climbed right out of the car and was going to talk to him about it, you know. And uh, when, I, when I got out of the car, he said, freeze, this is a stick-up. Well, <laughs> I looked at him and I said, well, okay. <laughs> and I know I kind of grinned because what I almost said, well, bless your heart. <laughs> But I didn't think that was the appropriate salutation at the moment. So, um, <laughs> so I took my books and I laid them on top of the car. And um, he said, I, I want your money. And I, of course, I kind of figured that's what he wanted. <laughs> so I knew that I had $5 in my, in, my, um, in my pocket. And if God hadn't helped about 30 minutes before, I would have had eight because God stopped me three minutes before to get three dollars of gas and if I hadn't I've lost all my money wouldn't have any gas to get home on so God did help me stop to get gas and I had, Amen. Least, had yep. gas in my car to get home but I knew I had that five dollar bill in my billfold and I said well I tell you what I've got five dollars in my billfold and I'll give you that and I took out my wallet and I showed him that it was empty you know besides the five so that he wouldn't take my wallet and go you know I had to go through all the things of getting new driver's license and all this so I wouldn't be sure to keep that and uh, but as I was handing it to him, <laughs> I, uh, I said, you can have it in one condition. <laughs> I said, you can have it if you'll accept it in the name of Jesus. Well, <laughs> he looked at me. His response was, you're a Christian too. And I thought, I thought, uh, well... Yes, I, I responded to him. I said, yes, I am a Christian too. And um, so he started going into his story then of why he needed the money, about that he had a prescription to fill, and I think he said he needed $18, and he only had seven on him, and that if he didn't get his prescription filled, he would go into uh, his seizures again. So apparently it might have been some kind of epileptic medicine. I'm not sure. But he went through his story, you know, of how, how that um, he needed the money. And when he got through... I, I, of course, I stood there listening to him, and I wasn't thinking about reporting him, so I, I, I had, wasn't trying to pay attention to the scars in his face or you know, any kind of thing like that. But uh, when he got through with the story, I said, well, I sure trust you can get the rest of the money. Of course, I, I, I didn't, wasn't meaning for him to go out and rob anybody else, but, but um, anyway, he, I think he was appreciative for the, the $5. And uh, when he was turning, when he was turning to leave unconsciously, I guess, or maybe God was helping, I stuck out my hand to shake hands with him, and he he brought his hand out of his pocket to shake hands with me. Now this is the pocket he's been holding at me like this all the time with his finger in it, you know. So he took had to take his gun hand out to shake hands with me and shook hands with me and left. But um, what I was thankful for was this, the fact of God helping, and because you just don't know, you know what's going on. But yet, yet, see, I knew Jesus was with me, and I did all these things really without thinking. Now, there's been several things come out of it already. One, uh, of course, I called up campus security then and, and naturally reported it because I felt I should, and for several different reasons. I couldn't get the money back. I'd already given away in the name of Jesus, so it wasn't mine anyway. So I wasn't worried about the money anymore. But um, I remember talking to the patrolman, and uh, 
I went through the story with him, and I got to the part about saying, I'll give it to you one condition, you know. Of course, I kind of paused and hesitate, and I said, no, you've got to understand my background. <laughs> I said, you know, then I went in and told him what I said, and he kind of smiled. And he didn't smile, um, you know, like, oh, who are you kidding? You know, it wasn't like that. He smiled real sweetly. And he said to me later, after I finished the report, he says, you know, it was good that you talked to him because you just don't want to take a chance with anybody that might have a gun. And, um, but he says, you know, he said he might just have enough religion in him to make him stop and think. He says, your statement might have sparked just enough in him that he might stop and think about what he did. And um, so I was real glad about that. Not only that, but about an hour before church, I got a phone call from the school newspaper, and they wanted the story. And I found out from them, I kind of questioned them, I found out the police <coughs> report didn't include any, much of my statements. So I went ahead and gave them the full story again, and even included in it uh, two scripture references. And if I can have your language version, I'll do international version. I read to them... For the newspaper article, I said, I've got, two, I've got two scripture references for you to back up what I did. I said, one of them is Matthew 25, 40, in which it says, Verily I say unto you, and this is, but it says here, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of, one of the least of these of mine, brothers, you did it for me. What I was doing for the robber, when I gave it to him, I was giving it to Jesus. So that's, that was my whole... You know, I, I, he, was, he was one of the least of these brethren that Christ mentioned. And I don't know that I wasn't under a test, you know, that I could have been. But anyway, that was one thing I thought of. And the other was um, Romans 8, 28, which we've been talking about. Amen. And uh, which um, <laughs> I'll read to you. I haven't read it out of this, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> and it says here, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, Amen. who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. So I knew that I love God, and I knew that I've been called. Amen. So God works all things to my good. That's right. Man. And uh, so I gave this to the newspaper, and she was pretty excited, so I'm anxious, you know, kind of to read the article tomorrow <laughs> and see what it says, but I was thankful for Jesus' help. Amen. Praise the Lord.